I think one of the most important ways in which we can help other people is by not making people look for upsides before they're ready. That's mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite helping strategies is um, not forcing somebody to see a positive perspective before they're ready. And I think we've all got to practice that over the last two years. Now I'm going to let that one soak in because Mm. that means a lot to me as well. Mm. I see it all the time. Oh, look at the bright side of life, right? But, you know, we all know it's okay not to be okay. It is okay not to be okay. And it uh, it is an act of love, compassion, uh, trust and respect to let somebody experience negative emotions without you trying to clean them up because you are uncomfortable that they are uncomfortable. Mm. Amen. Amen. That's, that's a beautiful thing. It's reminding me of the mindfulness teacher, mm. world renowned mm. Thich Nhat Hanh, who originated mm. in Vietnam who just went back, by the way, after about 50 years of exile. It's, it's an amazing story. And he said something like, when you really love someone and you know that they're spiraling, you know that they're really struggling with something, the best thing you can say, and I, I'm paraphrasing, is something like, darling, I am here for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just here I, for you. I'm here for you. I believe you. Mm. Right. I think I believe you is is really powerful. Uh, I'm here for you. I believe you. I'm I'm ready if and when you are all of those things that are about being with them in the present rather than trying to push them towards a future they may not be ready to see or hold yet. So thank you for, for sharing those words with me. I completely agree. I wish I had come up with them myself, but I'll take them. <laughs> you can borrow them. I'm sure he, he'll be very them. happy. So mental health, emotional well-being, and leadership yeah. communication, it all kind of works hand in hand, doesn't it, Deb? It, it sure does. And, mm-hmm. and again, that's one of the upsides of the last couple of years is that talking about mental health and mental well-being went from something that many leaders thought, what does this have to do with work, right? That's mm-hmm. that's an at-home problem. That's a your outside life problem to something that became uh, the top of every organization's list to talk about. 